Hi guys, okay, so I've got a pretty cool case to show you today. I literally just finished this off last week and uh, we've got a bit of ortho going on, a bit of restorative and I hope you find it useful. So these are the, the before and after photos and you can see the main reason that this patient came in was her front tooth, which some dentists had, had built this like a, on, on a temporary tooth there. And um, it, it's really, really prominent. It's really obvious, it looks horrible. And you can see just about underneath this, uh, this this thing, uh, there is a, a tooth stump there, right? And this tooth was unrestorable, so the tooth had to go. So her big thing was she wanted to bring her, her teeth back and just have a nice looking upper set of teeth. She didn't really care about the lower teeth. But look at the, the kind of the level of overbite we have here and the lower teeth have totally over erupted we're in traumatic overbite there's a bit of like gingival recession on the linguals of the the upper anteriors and um, and that's one of the contributing factors which is why the front teeth are so wide and spaced so we had to address the lower teeth first before we can even look at doing a decent job on the top teeth and this is how we did it so as you can see, we've got the um, we've got a, just a, a fixed brace on on the lower teeth, right? That's all we needed to do. Just get some get the teeth all aligned and help intrude that anterior segment. And just by working through a normal wire sequence, probably I don't know of a 14, 18, 20, 20. It looks like we've got a 20, 20 wire here or something like that. Um, we were able to just level out that lower arch. So here's a photo to illustrate how much space I actually managed to get, okay? But now there's something really cool which we're doing on the on the top teeth. And what it was, budget was a bit of an issue with this with this patient, and we couldn't do fixed upper and lower, although that would have probably been the, the most ideal situation. But I thought about it, and all we need to really do with the upper teeth, upper front teeth, is just pull them back, just retract them in. The spaces are already there, it's just a tipping motion, and I don't need to be that accurate because we're gonna change it for a crown and a bridge later in the future anyway. So this is what I did. So here's an occlusal shot and let's, let, let me walk you through it. So first thing we need to know is I've got this um, kind of like 1825 wire here and here, right? I can't remember if it was 1825 or 1925 or whatever, but basically it was um, 18, 25 and stainless steel okay so it needs to be a nice strong wire that's that's not going to flex and there's no brackets there we're literally just gluing this wire onto the teeth with composite the reason is anchorage okay so if we've got these all these teeth here and this is the the one this tooth is effectively locked and that's a picture of a lock into position Okay, so that, that's my main goal here. I don't want those guys to move. I don't want any kind of side effects there. Then, if we want to pull the front teeth back, there's, obviously, there's gonna be a force of the back teeth coming forward, which we want to resist, okay? And that's the reason for anchoring that far back. So then, I tie some power chain onto the wire on one side, okay? So that, that's the, the power chain tied in. And that then goes all the way across the, the labial surface of the teeth, and we've got a, like a, a, a composite stop here. So we've got a comp composite button, actually. And the composite button is, is basically like a mushroom, which you just put the power chain over. And you don't need a lot of pressure to do this. Teeth are gonna tip quite easily. So you just put a gentle pressure on there, like this. But there is a problem with this. So if, we've, if you look at this, we've got uh, the teeth uh, here. This is a cross section of the teeth with the power chain. And the power chain is pulling that way. Okay, and what's going to happen is this, um, because the, the, the saliva and everything, this power chain is going to ride up very, very quickly, and we're going to get sort of gum issues at the top there. So obviously we don't want this. So to stop this happening, what I do is put a composite button on the front tooth, on the porcelain tooth. And you can see this here, it's basically you just roughen the surface of the tooth, a bit of silane, a bit of composite, make a blob, so that when you're pulling on the power chain, the power chain isn't going to ride up the tooth and cause gingival issues and uh, it's going to be more annoying than actually effective. So we did that and after a few months we actually got a pretty good result. So this is what it looked like. Okay so you can see here that the the power chain is still on the on the front teeth and if you look they're pretty upright which is which is good that's what I wanted. Um, the, the temporary tooth is, is okay there. Oh about this temporary tooth by the way um, 
when we took out that really stumpy root, we, we just let it heal and I just left her with a temporary denture, so it's just a removable denture. But now that we want to retract the teeth, that temporary denture is no good because that temporary denture is going to be, you're going to get this power chain pushing the, power, the denture out, the denture teeth are not going to move, everything's going to look misaligned. So what you do then is just make a composite tooth and bond it to the tooth next door. Again, we've got porcelain both sides, so you roughen the surface and, you know, silane and etch bond or, or you know, what you, what you normally do there. So, um, and then you just make a temporary tooth and that temporary tooth will then move with the power chain, which is pretty cool. That's exactly what we want. And you can see the bottom teeth are pretty much done. We, we just cleaned them up, uh, retainer back there. And this, this is the kind of photo I use to judge how far back these teeth need to go. She does have a skeletal two pattern, okay? So we're never gonna get the, the incisors into a class one. And we don't actually really want that anyway. So there's always gonna be this lip issue that she's got. But when she says the letter F, I want the incisal tip to be as close to that wet dry border as possible, okay? Preferably inside. So this is her saying F, and you can see that the, the wet dry border and the incisal edge relationship is pretty good at this point. So I felt good. We set a made an appointment to take all the, the crown work off, do the bridge prep and, and everything there. So this is what she looked like when she came in for the bridge prep, right? And we've had this unwanted movement, okay? And it looks really dramatic, but when you actually look at it, it's, it's only that central has moved a little bit out of its most ideal position. And because this temporary tooth is based on the position of the central, it's kind of acting like a lever and it makes it look a lot worse than it is. So my options were either I can um, correct this misalignment or we can take off the crown and bridge and let's see what we're actually left with. So I chose option two to see what we're actually left with. So this is how I do my, my bridge work. So essentially first thing I do is I'll, I've just added a bit of composite to get the incisal edges roughly to where we, where I want to where, want it all to be, right? And you can see this, this added up. Nothing looks beautiful at this stage. So we just take the um, the the composite, we put it onto the on, onto the teeth, and you take an alginate impression off the whole lot. Then we took everything off and we've got this lovely dark post, right? And this should be ringing alarm bells, but it didn't really because I thought we'd be able to block it out quite easily. Anyway, the, the other two teeth look pretty good. And the plan is to have a three unit bridge going from this central to this canine and have a single standing um, uh, crown just on that side, okay? And therefore transforming the smile, making her look amazing and took our bite records and everything and did the, the prep work as, uh, as I thought was necessary. Then, from the original, that mock-up kind of uh, alginate, I just put that in with, this is Luxabite, and we put it in and you can just about see, I've marked out the, um, the, the kind of the, the margins of the, the crown work, all right? So you just take the, the temporary down to those margins and this is what we're left with. It doesn't look amazing, um, and we tied it up and from this I basically just craft the trial smile, okay, I don't get wax ups done and to be honest it's a lot easier if you do get wax ups done. Um, but this is just the way that I've been, I've been taught and how I, I, I practice it. So first stage, get the, the length of the teeth right, okay, so I'm not really looking at anything else, just the, the length and I think the length is pretty good at this stage. Then after we're happy with the length, we're gonna check it from the, the side. And again, you want to, well, I, I wanna get, make sure that, that wet board, the F sound wet dry border is exactly how I want it to be, okay? And you wanna, I don't want them to be too proclined. They're a little bit retroclined because she had that skeletal too. Um, and I think if they're, they're upright on the skeletal too, they just look a little bit too dominant. The patient looks a little bit too toothy. So we did that. And then I stand in front of the patient because I can never get this right from the back and I draw the midline. Okay, so we get the midline in exactly the right place. I don't care where the ginger is at this stage, but the midline is pretty much in the right place. And then we use the, I use like my eye to estimate the golden proportion and the width of the, the front teeth. So you can see the markings I've put on here for the width of the teeth. 
And then we, we kind of work on the embrasures of the teeth a little bit, work on the, the gingival aspect and prep everything as a, as a whole. Sorry, pr do the trial smile as a whole. So, and then you realize that your lab actually wants a stump shade. So you then take stump shades of the, of the teeth and, um, and then you just work on the, the temporaries until they look exactly right. You can add flow and then just carve it and then you put Luxa, Luxa, flow, no, Luxa glaze just to, to polish it up, make it look a little bit natural, add a bit of warmth to the teeth as well. But you can even see here that that dark post is still showing through, right? And this should be alarm bells for what's to come. Um, but the, the temporaries, I'm pretty happy with them at this stage. She's pretty happy with them. Um, but what we do, we do I'll, I'll let her go home, she can test it out, make sure she is really happy with them, and then we just take a mold of them and say, look, copy this to the lab. Okay, so a few weeks later, she comes in, she's really happy with it, everything looks really great, you can see the gums have healed up a little bit at this stage, so we just take an impression of it at this stage and tell the lab to copy it. That's my patient approved provisional. And then she's happy with it, we then fit. Okay, so this, these are the, the finals in position. Okay, and I was a little bit, remember we've moved the, the underlying teeth. So I, I thought, okay, look, it's a little bit risky. Uh, we need to get a removable retainer on there kind of as quick as possible. But I thought because we've got a bridge and both the teeth are really well bonded into position, it's unlikely we're gonna get a lot of movement. Okay, so we took a, an, an impression. And two weeks later, or, or it wasn't even that, I think it was like a week or a few days later, she came in and, uh, and this is what it looked like, right? We've got a gap between the bridge and the, the single crown and it looks terrible. Anyway, um, because I had that original retainer made, I asked her just to wear that religiously and I just basically kept my fingers crossed, hoped that gap would, would close up. And luckily it did. A few days later she came in and you know what, the, the gap looks looks perfect it looks like um, on the fit day well, only the gums are a little bit nicer as well so to stop this happening again all I did was just prep the inside of the teeth a little bit or the in, inside of the, um, the the porcelain restorations put in a, a fixed retainer just holding those two and I made a new removable retainer to go over the top um, which will fit uh, with the new fixed retainer in position now because she had it like this big skeletal two and the lower teeth were the reason the top teeth had all proclined, the, the lab does have a tendency to, to make these teeth in the wrong kind of shape. Let me show you what I mean. So if, uh, if th these are the, the, the lower teeth and that's my, my prep at the top here and my temporary teeth or, or my kind of the trial smile teeth are shaped like that okay that's what I want back right but some labs do have a tendency to basically bulk out all of that like that okay so that they, they get a contact between the top and the bottom teeth and that creates actually a problem because it interferes with your guidance your envelope of function and you're more likely to put more stress on these on these front teeth so what you what you do need to do is basically just if the lab does this first of all tell them not to do it but then literally just prep that you go you got to take all of that out from there reduce the restriction on the patient's movement and therefore any interference with her with her normal bite okay so I hope you got something out of this video right there's a load of little stages in this treatment so if you've got any questions comments just you know put them in the in the comments below and I'll try and get back to everyone so um, if you liked it give it a thumbs up or, or just hit like it just helps more people find the video all right take care bye